Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Guys, I finally got what I used to call the sharper image racket, but in the mid plus. Stay tuned. All right, so coffee sponsor of today is Alexi Dushkin. Alexi writes, hey Harry, you are doing an awesome job with your channel. Keep punching. I have a question. What do you think is the future of racket technologies? More flex or stiff or most hit absorbing materials? Hmm, that is a very interesting question there. Tennis rackets have come during my lifetime a long way. I mean, when I first picked up a racket, uh, it was wood. Then it went to steel. Then it went to um, oversized steel. Then it went to aluminum. Then it went to graphite composites, fiberglass. So uh, f on the material side, it's actually um, gotten stiffer, right? So if you look at like old videos of um, old matches, when they hit with the wooden racket, the ball was not going over as fast. I mean, it was still physical, but not like it is today. Uh, you made your way to the net and you tried to put it away in like three, four shots. Today, it's more like a slugfest. So like you said, keep punching. You know, I'm going to stand at the baseline, you're going to stand at the baseline, and we're going to just slug it out. It's because of what's happening with the rackets. It's the graphite rackets. It's easier to get more spin, easier to get more power. So because they're at, you know, the, I mean, there, there's kind of nowhere else to go. <laughs> so, so I think that everybody just follows each other's trends. And right now the trend is um, that throat area, the yoke, as people call it, um, where they make it a little more flexible for more feel. I'm actually going to do, I'm thinking about doing a video on what I think um, the future of rackets will go and where it should be uh, and, and look for that one um, in the near future, okay? But uh, I mean, it's everybody follows each other's trends. First it was stiffness and then power, power stiffness goes together and now everybody's trying to give you more feel. So the future, I mean, we already did smart rackets, right? So the future is wherever the trend is. I would like a racket that plays for you. <laughs> All right, Lexi, thank you for the question. Um, I appreciate the coffee. If you want to be my coffee sponsor of the day, network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. Thank you all for the cup of joes every morning. If you want to support the channel, super thanks is the way. There is a little link below. You can click on that and support us with as much or as little as you like. All right? Thank you so much for that. All right, so I was able to get this racket finally after... Man, it's been like 30 years. <laughs> I mean, I did a little story on the oversized version of this racket. It's called a Blackburn. This is the 97 version. And I've been trying to get one of these for not too much. Like, I didn't want to spend too much on it um, for the past five years. So it took me a while to get one. So just in case you don't know what this is, um, I called it the sharper image racket because there was a store at Giardelli Square. You know Giardelli Square, the famous chocolate. So inside that shopping center, there was a big store 
a sharper image store. You know, massage chairs, um, you know, massage yourself uh, technologically and futuristic stuff that you would buy that was way overpriced, but people bought it because it was cool. Well, one day when I went in there when I was in high school, they had this racket and the oversized version sitting there with a video telling you why this was a great racket, why it could be the best racket. And I looked at, I looked at it and I was like, that's weird. There's like strings on this side, strings on this side. So there's two faces to this racket. I don't know if you can see that, but um, essentially you have to, you know, when I string this racket, I have to charge you for two string jobs because we have to string both sides of the face. Because it's like stringing two rackets at the same time. Now, why did they do that? Let's take a look at this. So they put the grommets on the edge of the racket and their technology is that this whole thing is a sweet spot. No matter where you hit it on the face, because there is no edge, you don't have to worry about shanking it. I'm sure you still can shank it, but your shank won't go crazy. You can hit here on the edge and the ball would still have a little something, right? All the way to the edge, guys. So I was like, man, I wish I could try one of those. But I think from what I remember, the price tag was like $399. Just like, you know, the rest of the stuff over there was definitely a high ticket item. So I was like, eh, maybe someday. Well, fast forward to 30 years later, well, Someday came. <laughs> so finally got one and I've never tried the mid plus. So it's a four and a half grip made in China. Still, really? Even back then, huh? All right. So let's weigh it up. Um, I left the things, the dampeners on it. See, you had to buy two dampeners too. if you want the full absorption. So everything's gonna be double on this, okay? Double the price, yeah, double the price, double the dampers, because you can buy two. At least you don't have to buy two grips, you know? So let's check out numbers. I could feel it's really heavy in the head because there is double the string here. That's not horrible. 312, 11 ounces, hmm. that's even with the dampeners on there, it must be really heavy in the head then, yes it is, <laughs> whoa, Yeah, it's 37, 372, 371. Dang. <laughs> That's, uh, I mean, look at, look at, look at where the middle point is. It's almost where the dampener is. That means all the weight's concentrated up there. It's probably because of the, the string too. Also, back in the day when these were out, head heavy was in. If you think about profiles and hammers, they were all kind of like this. Um, let's check out the swing weight. All right, so check out the swing weight. Yeah, that thing's like. Whew, 374. The swing weight and the, the balance is almost the same. Let's check it out. All right, so 
11 ounces all in, just like this. That's just like any other racket over here. The beam, to me, looks like about a 23 and a half to 24. So yes, wider because we got two strings going on here. Um, the telltale sign though is that it's extremely head heavy at 372 millimeters and then 374 on the swing weight. That's, man, that's Andy Murray range. I think Andy Murray's racket is like 380. So it's extremely head heavy. Um, Man, I, I mean, I like my thing head heavy, but I don't know if I can handle this this head heavy. Uh, so, let's see, uh, let's see if Coach Rob wants to hang out with me and try this uh, thing out. I'm sure he remembers this racket. See you on the court. All right, so interesting feel, interesting sound. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's go, Coach Rob. <laughs> uh, the feel was very dampened. Uh, could be the double shock absorber, could be the double string pattern. Um, I definitely hit some shots and heard some sounds that um, were very interesting, very noticeable. Uh, even Harry across the court picked up on it. Uh, it seemed like it was when I was hitting a backhand, it was just a really, I wasn't even hitting a lot of topspin, but it had a lot of rip sound to it. Um, but it's really interesting to hit with a racket that's got strings on both sides. So, um, so I it, think, so here's the technology because it's all the way on the end, right. maybe you're hitting it over here and they'll go, bah, bah. it, it could have. <laughs> yeah, definitely. There's something going on. I don't know how to, uh, you know, say how I did it, or I'm not sure I could repeat it, but. Um, I noticed it not when I hit a forehand, it didn't happen, but just a couple backhands. Maybe you ripped that backhand so hard, you made those strings kind of, you know, recoil. Yeah, okay. And, and, and wham! Sure, <laughs> sure. Maybe the strings are so old that it's just like... That could <laughs> be. That could be. Yeah, really interesting. Um, I, I would hate to string this. Oh, yeah. I, I Thank God I had never have... But it's, you're definitely doing two string jobs at once, from what I've read and seen. Uh, but the technology is that because it's out by the frame, you have the whole thing as a sweet spot. Right. I was just thinking, I don't think I used both sides. When you hold with a continental, you went here with the back and here with the forehand. Right. I, will, I go here with the forehand, and then I go here with the backhand. So I think I just used this side. I don't think I ever got to this side. Could be. <laughs> yeah. Because for think about a forehand, right? And I don't hit like back end like this. I hit a back end like this. 
so I'm here. So maybe I, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, it would be interesting to play with it long enough for it to break a string. Yeah, and, and to see what, um, how that would be. To, do you have to restring both sides, one you, side? You do. You um, do. How would it be weaving? I mean, that would be awkward. I would, you know, if you've woven one side, how do you? You do it at the same time. You yeah. cut them both out and you do them at the same just, time is what I've seen. Mm. It, yeah. It's, it's definitely going to be interesting, though. Hopefully, right. we don't need, need to ever do it. Let's, let's not find <laughs> that out. But Racket is super heavy in the head, just like the 107. Like, all the weights here. I mean, you're carrying both string, two strings here. You're carrying two dampeners here, naturally. And back in the day when these were popular, head heavy was definitely the in thing. Uh, wider bodies were definitely an in thing. This head guard reminds me of a prince. Right. Um, but yeah, no, super cool. I'm glad I finally got my hands on one of these. And uh, I was like, Canada, USA patent. They got patents. Whoa, there's a, what the heck? Sorry, guys, I'm getting off track here. Just checking. Just checking some information. Oh, check it out. The double string racket is invented by Robin Blackburn, designed and developed by Blackburn Advanced Racket Systems. Suggested string tension, 50 pounds and 59 pounds. Between 50 pounds, 59 pounds. Stringing above 59 pounds is not recommended and many and may void limited warranty. High tension gives more control. Lower tension gives more power. I'm glad there's instructions in there. <laughs> that was cool. That was cool. Coach Rob? Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad. Fun to hit with it. I, I'd, I'd seen it before, and like I said, we'd hit with the 107 before, but nice to hit with the smaller head size and yep. kind of have like the whole thing feel like the sweet spot. Yeah. I'm glad I finally got my hands on the sharper image racket that I wanted to have but never wanted to buy. <laughs> right. Coach Rob, thank you so much for hanging out with me today and playing with the Blackburn 97. Guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Hmm. Is this on? Harry, Harry, what are we doing here? Oh, hey bud. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, so I'm just setting up my swing vision over here so that during our hitting session, uh, we can, you know, see how bad I'm doing today. Okay, great. Yeah. But you won't be doing bad, Eric. No. You'll I'm... be moving your feet watching the ball. This, this is why I love you, buddy. <laughs>